Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, still here on the banks of the river Foy in uh, Foy, Foy, Foy. You see, I'm an Emmet, I'm from Yorkshire. This is Cornwall, I think it's Foy. <laughs> uh, but it's in Lostwithiel, beautiful village of Lostwithiel. You may be able to see children playing idyllically in the, uh, you see that there, underneath the uh, arches of the bridge? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, beautiful day though, uh, I'm here seeing clients, so hence the suit. We're going to continue our series on equity release. This is, I believe, number nine. So I think we've got one more to go after this, just to wrap it all up. But we talked last time about the advice process, the legal uh, advice process and the financial advice process, which you will go through when taking out an equity release uh, product of some kind. And I mentioned something called the peer group. That's the professional expertise. No, it isn't. Professional excellence in equity release uh, scheme. It's uh, set up by the Personal Finance Society, one of the representative bodies for UK financial advisors. And what it basically is, is a checklist of things that your advisor should speak to you about when you are considering equity release. So I'm going to rattle through those things in this video. There's 19 of them. But what I'm going to do is put a PDF uh, file underneath the post here so that you've got them so you can, if you're considering equity release, you can make sure your advisor is speaking to you about all these things. As ever, before I get into it, I must quickly thank my good friends, Seven Investment Management. They're down here in the bottom right. They sponsor this show and I'm extremely grateful to them for doing so. So 19 points your advisor should cover with you when you're considering equity release. Are you ready? Sitting comfortably? Let's go. 19 points. The first one is they should ask you and explore your reasons for considering equity release. So you need to know what those reasons are. Secondly, they should go through with you some alternatives. The first of which is have you considered downsizing, selling your house and buying somewhere smaller to release money that way? Thirdly, have you considered financial support from your family? Have you approached family to see if you can borrow or take money from them? Fourthly, can you use other savings? You know, maybe you've got some money squirreled away that you've forgotten about or whatever, um, but can you provide for yourself in another way? They should also cover, this is now five, uh, they should consider, you know, if you're looking to do equity release for home improvements, say, have you looked into getting grants for doing that instead? Instead of borrowing the money off your home, can you get it free in the form of a grant from the government? Are you claiming all the state benefits you can? A good advisor should know what benefits you are uh, eligible for and can help you claim. Are you claiming all the pensions? You know, maybe you used to work for the post office years ago and you never did claim that pension that you thought you had when you were there. Maybe you've got some personal pensions, some private pensions that you haven't taken out. An advisor should be looking at your equity release in the wider context of financial planning and should be asking you about your pension uh, arrangements. Is there any that you're not claiming? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now on number eight, your advisor should uh, go through the tax implications particularly, specifically inheritance tax, but there are others, primarily the inheritance tax implications, but also the inheritance implications, the fact that you are chances, uh, the chances are you are going to be leaving your children less money as a result of doing equity release. Is your advisor talking to you about that? Next, again, in the wider context of your financial planning, your advisor should be talking to you about your health. What is your health like? Are you concerned? Is your longevity likely to be reduced by any current health concerns that you have? He or she should be asking you about uh, changes or possible changes in your future circumstances. Might you want to move at some point to be nearer to your children who live away, for example? Um, maybe, you know, if you're in a couple, one of you will die first, probably. Um, what effect that m might that have? Your advisor should be prompting you to think about future changes in circumstances. Might you need more money in the future? You're talking about uh, you know, taking a lump sum out of your property now or an income in, out of your property now. Might you need more again in the future? If so, then it may be a case of arranging a drawdown lifetime mortgage where you can draw a bit now, but have a facility to draw some more in the future. So again, your advisor should be talking about that. Long-term care is a biggie. It should be part of your planning at this stage of life anyway, but certainly if you're considering equity release, you need to have uh, in mind uh, long-term care and the possibility that you might need that in future and what effect that would have on your planning. What effect the death of a partner would have? 
it's not an easy subject, but your advisor should be gently saying, okay, if you know one of you was to go first, what would life look like for the one left behind? Would you do less? Would you do more? Uh, would you need to spend more money or less? Asking these questions. Wider things. They should perhaps ask you on your view of property prices. Um, just as three or four videos ago, I looked at calculations based on assumed uh, rate of interest and assumed growth in the property market. Your advisor should ask you and should have a view him, himself what he thinks property prices might do. None of us know, of course, um, but he should be discussing that with you, certainly. He should make sure he explains uh, fully the role of your solicitor and explain why you need to seek independent legal advice. That's uh, an absolute certainty. He should be talking to you about your wills uh, because if you're going to make a big decision with your property here, you need to um, understand what bearing that has on the way you leave your estate to your next of kin. And then finally, specifically, finally, there's two more things. Specifically, he should talk to you about all the different types of equity release, which we've covered in this series, um, and begin to ask questions to help him or her formulate an opinion as to which would be best for you so that they can recommend that. And then finally, finally, uh, talk to you about your eligibility for equity release. You know, the value of your property, uh, your age, the age of the youngest uh, uh, borrower, if it's gonna be a mortgage, and things like that. That's 19 points. <laughs> Too many really to stick a graphic up after each one. It'd take me forever. So instead, there's a PDF under the uh, video here so you can uh, take a checklist with you, print it off and uh, take it if you're going to see an advisor about equity release. So one more video on this and that's going to be a summary, tying it all together. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Here, yeah, I think I'm going to move on somewhere else now. It's beautiful here, but it can get a bit dull looking at the same backdrop. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time for a summary of this equity release series.